and welcome to this module on polyacrylamide gels. In this module, I'll be discussing the reactions which form the polyacrylamide gels as we know them. Polyacrylamide gels are used for polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis, or PAGE for short, and it's important to understand the actual reactions that undergo or happen in the creation of a polyacrylamide gel so that there is a deeper appreciation of the polyacrylamide gel and the process by which we make them. Importantly, what I will be discussing in this module is the major components that make up the polyacrylamide gel and that actually react to produce the polyacrylamide gel matrix. In reality, the creation of polyacrylamide gel will also involve the addition of secondary components, such as glycerol, water, and perhaps things like TBE to the gel. These have secondary, although important, effects to the overall polyacrylamide gel, but the idea of this module is to discuss the reactions that happen in the creation of the solid matrix, which we call the polyacrylamide gel. The solid matrix that we call the polyacrylamide gel is produced using these components, which are the acrylamide monomers, the methylene bisacrylamide. I'll simply call this as bisacrylamide in the rest of the module, but keep in mind that in methylene bisacrylamide, there is an additional methylene group. You also utilize ammonium per sulfate and tetramethylene diamine, or TIMID for short, which are important in facilitating the polymerization of acrylamide monomers as well as the cross-linking that bisacrylamide engages in between acrylamide polymers. So in reality, the major components of the acrylamide gels are the acrylamide and the bisacrylamide. However, the ammonium persulfate and the tetramethylene diamine are important in facilitating the polymerization reactions of acrylamide monomers as well as the cross-linking of bisacrylamide in between acrylamide polymers. And I'll discuss all of these components and how they play a role in polyacrylamide gel creation, more specifically the reactions that happen in the creation of polyacrylamide gels in the next slides. So let me begin by discussing ammonium persulfate or APS and tetramethylene diamine or TIMID for short. So in polyacrylamide gel creation, you need to basically polymerize acrylamide monomers. So if you take these boxes as being acrylamide monomers, obviously what I'm doing here is I'm polymerizing those acrylamide monomers by linking them to one another. In your polyacrylamide gel creation process, you'll have many of these polymers that will be produced, polymers of acrylamide monomers, that is. These polymers of acrylamide need to be cross-linked with one another. It is bisacrylamide that allows for the cross-linking between polymers of acrylamide. So this line right here would represent bisacrylamide. On the other hand, the boxes here would represent the acrylamide monomers. And in order for the polymerization or the creation or the linkage of different acrylamide monomers to happen, you need to radicalize APS. And it is the radicalized APS, more specifically, APS will essentially be divided into two halves, two bisulfate radicals. And these bisulfate radicals are the ones that will facilitate the polymerization of the acrylamide monomers. In addition, it is the bisulfate radicals which form after you radicalize APS that will also facilitate the cross-linking or the reaction of the bisacrylamide with two different polymers of acrylamide. So in reality, APS can spontaneously radicalize with heat input. So in the figure to the top, you can see APS, the chemical structure of APS to the left. This is how APS looks and what will happen if you input heat to APS is that this APS will radicalize. In other words, this bond that you see here between two oxygen atoms in APS 
will result in radicalization by having one electron move to this oxygen and another electron move to this oxygen, producing two of this bisulfate radical. It is this bisulfate radical that plays a role in the polymerization of acrylamide monomers as well as the cross-linking that happens between bisacrylamide and acrylamide polymers. However, in reality, it is not heat input that we use to create the polyacrylamide gel. Oftentimes, it is the addition of another compound, which is timid, that can help in initiating the radicalization of APS under room temperature conditions. To show this to you, I will illustrate what's happening in the figure at the bottom. Here to the left, you can see the chemical structure of timid, and to the right, you can see the chemical structure of ammonium persulfate, which I've just covered. Basically, the idea of this is that you will cut this APS at this oxygen-oxygen single bond, and in doing so, this will cause a radical that will form on this oxygen and a radical that will form on this oxygen. This process of radicalizing APS does not happen simply by cutting the oxygen-oxygen single bond. It will take more than that to do so. Basically, timid can be seen here to the left, and it is reacting with APS to the right. The nitrogen on the timid, more specifically the electron pair on the nitrogen, will react with this oxygen to form a bond. After that, the electrons in the oxygen-oxygen single bond will move to this oxygen right here, and this causes the creation of this chemical structure. And after you create this chemical structure, an electron from the nitrogen-oxygen single bond will move to the oxygen on what previously used to be APS, now a bisulfate, and another electron will move to the nitrogen on timid, and that produces a bisulfate radical as well as a timid radical. It is the bisulfate radical that will assist in the polymerization of acrylamide as well as the cross-linking by bisacrylamide. So let me discuss the reactions that are unfolding between bisulfate radicals, the acrylamide monomers, and bisacrylamide. So as I said earlier, the bisulfate radicals are created by APS and it is timid which is added to APS that will cause the initiation of the formation of these bisulfate radicals. If you don't add timid at room temperature to APS, APS will likely not form any significant bisulfate radicals and thus will not result in the polymerization of your acrylamide monomers as well as the cross-linking. But since we have the bisulfate radicals now, we can discuss the actual polymerization of acrylamide and the cross-linking. So the first thing that happens is that the bisulfate radical will react with an alkene group of the acrylamide monomer or the bisacrylamide. To the right, you can see a figure that I've inputted into the slides. On the top left, you can see the chemical structure of bisacrylamide. On the right, you can see two acrylamide monomers. These are not single acrylamide monomer, obviously. These are two acrylamide monomers. And I've also inputted this bisulfate radical for your understanding into this figure. What I want you to focus on is the radical on the oxygen atom here, which will result in the polymerization of acrylamide monomers, as well as the cross-linking by bisacrylamide. What happens here, as I said earlier, is that this radical will react with the alkene of either an acrylamide monomer or the bisacrylamide. Let's see what happens when it reacts with an acrylamide monomer. So this radical can react with the alkene of the acrylamide monomer, and this results in the movement of one electron. That's why I'm drawing a half arrowed curve, as well as another electron to the CH2 here. Basically, this results in the radicalization of this carbon. So you will form a radical here on this carbon, 
and this radical, this radical on this carbon can then react with the alkene of an adjacent acrylamide monomer. This results again in one of the alkenes electrons moving onto this carbon right here and another one moving here. This results in the radicalization of this carbon and the reaction moves forward and forward. In other words, this radical right here can then react with a, another acrylamide monomer. I don't have another acrylamide monomer here, but the idea is, is it can react with another acrylamide monomer and this causes the polymerization of acrylamide monomers. In addition, the radical can react with the alkene of an adjacent bis acrylamide, which facilitates the formation of crosslinking. The idea here is that you have, say, this acrylamide monomer, this box represents the acrylamide monomer B below, and then you have another acrylamide monomer, and you can see that they have linked to one another, and this happens on and on and results in the polymerization of the acrylamide monomers. In addition to the polymerization of the acrylamide monomers, you will have cross-linking, and it is the bis acrylamide that plays a role in the cross-linking. Before I get into bis acrylamide, I want to show you how the monomers look like in the figure here to the bottom. So in the bottom of the figure, you can see the various acrylamide monomers that have polymerized. For example, this right here is an acrylamide monomer, and this right here is another acrylamide monomer. They have connected with one another, but what you see in between, mainly this right here, is a bis acrylamide that is also integrating in between them and causing a crosslink to form between this polymer of acrylamide monomers and this polymer of acrylamide monomers. To be more clear, you can see another acrylamide monomer here. It is connected directly with this acrylamide monomer. However, when you have the cross-linking, you will have the bis acrylamide here that will integrate in between the acrylamide monomers and produce the overall cross-link. Importantly, in the bis acrylamide, what you have is an initiation of the cross-linking by the bisulfate radical itself. So this radical, let's suppose that this is the oxygen with the radical on it. And what this radical can do is it can react with the alkene of the bis acrylamide. This results in the following electron movement and this causes radicalization of this carbon and this radicalization will result in further reactions that results in the cross-linking between the different polymers of acrylamide monomers. So to be more specific, the bisulfate radical binds to the acrylamide monomer and then reacts with another acrylamide monomer before the bisulfate radical actually dissociates. So when I drew this electron movement in this radical here on the oxygen and this alkene should understand that this results in a bond and this bond will stay there until the bisulfate radical dissociates as the reaction of polymerization unfolds between acrylamide monomers. And once again, bis acrylamide reacts to cross-link the chains of acrylamide polymers as we saw here, in order to produce our overall polyacrylamide gel. And this concludes this module on polyacrylamide gels.